we are actually going into the speed round. It is two to one. It's anybody's game. We so have, far, there's been a lot of jabs. We have yet to have that really hard knockout blow. Come on, guys. A helpful tip before we start next round, guys. Bros don't cuddle. Come on now. Yeah. All righty. All righty, gang. Uh, just to grab a hold of the reins of the show here. Uh, we're going to go into speed round. Now, for those of you who are unaware or, or haven't seen the show yet, speed round is very easy. I'm going to bring up a topic. Neither one knows what it's going to be. The first one to answer is the first one to talk. You have 20 seconds to come up with an answer or the other person wins. Okay, so if I, just for example, if I say uh, best character of 2010 and immediately uh, King Billy said Donald J. Trump, if it, uh, thump, if it took 20 seconds for Dalton to answer, he would immediately forfeit the point. But uh, if he did come up with an answer, then King Billy would uh, start. Y'all understand? Mm-hmm. Okie dokie. Yeah, and you will have you'll have 15 seconds to uh, give your statement. Then the other person will have 15 seconds. Then you have 15 seconds for each point. rebuttal. All for right. Point clarif- wait, before you do a point of clarification. So when you say best character 2010, is that create a character or just character? No, 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 no. That, that's a question you always already answered. I, I just use it as an example. Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah. Because your question is we just talked about casting Hal Jordan. And a lot of people are angry about the fact that maybe Tom Cruise is going to be Hal Jordan. So let me yeah. ask you, of all the comic book movies that have come before us, who is the worst cast comic book character? Um, the new uh, the new Spider-Man actor, whatever his name is. Tom Holland? Shia LaBeouf Tom as Holland. Uh, Chaz Kramer in the 2005 Constantine movie. All righty, we've got... We've got Tom Holland as Spider-Man versus Shia LaBeouf as Chaz Kramer. That's too... Wow. Okay, guys. King Billy, you start. Um, Simple. He sounds... He's 15 years old, and yet he sounds like a 12-year-old whose balls haven't dropped. <laughs> You've got 20 seconds. Okay. Um, I did not like his acting style. He didn't seem act like Peter Parker. He acted like a little kid and to me peter parker acts kind of like i don't know like like that very funny sarcastic deep voice teenager that you know in high school the joker you know that that joker type of kid time all righty chaz kramer dalton go okay first of all let me describe chaz to you he's a he's a hard-boiled badass taxi driver and a mortal in in some stories and you know what was none of those? Shia LaBeouf, who shouldn't have graduated from even Stevens to become an actor, let alone cast as a 20 time character. <laughs> All righty, King, uh, your rebuttal? My rebuttal against that? Well, I haven't seen the movie, so I don't really have much to rebuttal against that, unfortunately. Well, let's talk more about uh, yours. Okay, I just think I just think given a character who's as iconic as Peter Parker, that's just, you know, his portrayal I thought was pretty bad. Just uninterested. I mean, not uninteresting. Just you didn't even feel like the character. Don't got much else really to say about that. Just uh, yeah. time. All right, Dalton, your rebut. Okay, here's the thing you're missing about Peter. He's a, at least in the era where he's starting here, he's a naive nerd. He's supposed to be a little bit overly innocent. He's supposed to be not particularly masculine because he's a he before the spider bite was a nerd. He's not going to stop being a nerd just because he got the spider bite. Tom Time. Holland played that excellently. Time. Yeah. All righty. I'm out as this because I, of the judging here. It's going to be corrupt, frugal, and then the audience if there's a tie break uh, needed. So corrupt, you want to start off? What did you think of the arguments? Who did uh, better? Who did worse? Honestly, uh, I think they did about. Uh, I think they, they did about the same. The thing was that Billy didn't hadn't really seen uh, Shia LaBeouf, so he didn't really have much input on that. Uh, and so much as he talked, he did a decent job talking up his points. Dalton, he kind of lost me on his last uh, on his last argument where he said that uh, nerds are like these shy, innocent woodland creatures, or however you describe them. I, it just didn't sell me enough. I don't think either of them did particularly well, to be honest with you. Alrighty. Oh, but, um, um, 
King Billy, yeah, I'll give it King to you. King Billy, all righty, guys. Uh, everybody in the uh, audience in the in the comment section, please tell me who you guys won so I could count up votes here. Uh, Frugal, what do you think? You know, uh, I, I I will say King Billy came out strong with the sounds too young, poor acting for the character. Uh, his weaknesses there, though, was he was not, not even able to fill his time slot of reasons for his own defense of his 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 analogy here. Whereas I have to say Dalton came out swinging on this one. I, I have a disagreement with the other judge on this one. He said it doesn't fit the character. He is poor actor. <laughs> he, he hit him from couldn't even get grow up from being a child actor and assume this role. And he also attacked his opponent's argument as well, and his an opponent couldn't defend it. I have to give this one as a strong round to Dalton. I say uh, we're a bit split then. I okay, there you go, guys. We need. Uh, I'm going to let it go for a little bit, and uh, let's see. We've got. Uh, we we were hearing things like Jennifer Gardner as uh, Electra. We got Dolph Lundgren as He Man. Keep voting, guys, for the next minute or so, if y'all don't mind. Um, also, Shaq as Steel was mentioned. We're standing ten to six, so I'm gonna uh, call it. And Dalton won this particular point. I yeah. agree there completely. I, I was I thought he was shaky at the at the first, and then he really came back. It, it came pretty brutal at the it's comeback. It's important so. to establish the character to understand why Shia LaBeouf is so woefully miscast in it. Dalton's at three. King's at one. King, if you want to be a king, you got to pull that yeah. out and swing it. Yep. Yeah. This is going to be an interesting topic, ladies and gentlemen, because it's one that in this day and age we do debate. So, uh, guys, Dalton, you're going to go first because you won last point. Tell me, what is better, floppy comics or digital? Floppies. All righty. That means you're going to be arguing for digital, King Billy. Sweet. All righty. As soon as you start speaking, uh, the time is on the clock, 20 seconds. When something is digital, it is entirely reliant on electricity and, and digitization. And it's much easier to get rid of things that are digital than it is physical. Moreover, there's actual artistry in printing. I, I mean... Going back all the way to Gutenberg's printing press, there was artistry in printing. Digital Time. was just pixels. Okay, thanks to digital comics, we have a lot more independent creators and people were able to get their art out there who may not have been able to get into the business because they were either their ideas were either rejected or they basically had something going against them. Like they could have been blacklisted or something, you know, just something out of their control could have made it so they couldn't get in the industry. So I think digital opens up a huge world of possibilities for creators who aren't hindered by like Time. massive companies. That's a problem with the industry, not the medium. The no, solution still there better, is way. just to fix the industry more so than the medium. The medium is still objectively better because it's physical. It's something you can touch. It's something you can preserve. It's something you can collect. With digital uh, comics, the Time. tactility is removed. Time still. <laughs> Well, the thing is, like, well, the thing is, digital comics you can't really get rid of them as easily as you think and stuff. Like with like physical comics, they can be lost and stuff, especially if they the company chooses not to reprint them or just loses track of them. A lot of stuff that get lost because they didn't, you know, preserve them. Same thing with film, basically. I think that are option because there's just time. you know, there's just yeah. Not based on what you prefer, but based on the arguments only in the uh, in the comments. Who did you think? won that debate not based on what you prefer but who who made the better argument uh corrupt start us off who made the better argument Ooh, both of them actually both of them actually made really decent and really good arguments so uh, dalton i'm gonna go with dalton though because i feel like uh what hurt billy was that and dalton called this out he was describing more about create he was describing something that wasn't the medium it wasn't the actual argument but how people can get their comics out until it until he came until he did a rebuttal where he actually started arguing about how floppy comics can be lost they can you can stop printing them and they can be destroyed but dalton came out really strong so i'm going with uh, giving the point to dalton all right, if frugal, what do you think? Oh, I thought that was an interesting judgment. Uh, you know, keeping my personal bias apart, and actually, this goes against my own theory. There, uh, they both argued the physical properties and the pros and cons of that. But 
really Dalton was a little floppy on his defense of that after that. He didn't really go much more than that. Whereas I, I'm going to give King the King here some props for the ability saying that the indie books are now able to flourish because of that. And it creates whole new possibilities that weren't available before if we were just doing floppies. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the floppy versus digital and the whole aspect of it, rather than just the physical premise here. I'm, I'm going to give it to King. Really on this one. I think they did really, but they both did really well. Though. All righty. Yeah. Um, one more point is going to decide for us then. I will address something. Maranya, that was my fault um, because it did sound like I did toss Dalton first choice, by, mm -hmm. but I, I did not mean to do that. That being said, we've just reached 10 points, and considering we had a tie between corrupt and frugal, the comment section so far has chosen 10 to 0 for the king. So, King Billy, you do get that point, and you are still in the game, my friend. Uh, I'm just Sweet. sorry about that, Dolphin. Um, okay, so this one's going to be a tough one. This is a deep cut question, ladies and gentlemen. This is something you, you this will uh, test whether they actually do read comics or not. Oh, going deep. It's a speed round. So, first what person to speak is first person to talk. The question is. In all of comicdom, who is the biggest womanizer? Biggest womanizer? Yeah. Oh, that's a hard one. Uh, darn, that's a hard one. Um, uh oh, it's gonna lose. Say, gotta hurry up. Okay, I'd say like uh, Batman. All right. Well, can can we, uh, Dalton? Would you accept it if you said Bruce Wayne? Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Okay. All righty. All righty, uh, Dalton. You're gonna start off with Tony Stark. Here's here's the thing about Tony, despite whatever moral um leaps and bounds he makes he's always the same he's always a braggart he's always a drunkard and he's always a womanizer he hits on gamora he hits on aliens that probably don't even have the appropriate private parts he hits on female avengers time he all right king billy as soon as you start talking time is on the clock okay so with batman even though he like um even though some people won't think of him as a womanizer, he still is really suave, especially, you know, in his Bruce Wayne persona, he's very suave at getting off girls. Because if you notice, Bruce Wayne always goes out on a lot of dates, <laughs> which, you know, is a kind of a common thing you see in a lot of his, um, in a lot of his comics and even in the movies. It's just, you know, he's always with a pretty girl. So he definitely has a thing with the ladies, which in my Time. opinion, is a really, yeah. Here, here's the thing with Bruce, though. Number one, it's a joke that how how it should have ended makes all the time. Hey, do you want to know my secret identity? Whenever Bruce gets involved, and he himself will admit this, it's always detrimental to his crime fighting. And moreover, the Bruce Wayne persona that he puts on for the public is fake. It's not his real time. personality. That doesn't stop him. That doesn't stop him from basically being able to womanize someone. It does You know, it's not key to his character but he still does it and you know having relationships even though it's detrimental to his crime fighting that doesn't take away that he still does it that's like not saying oh he can't be because it takes away from his character you could argue that that's just a character flaw potentially that could get in the way of him crime fighting or could Time. ruin his relationships all righty this is it this is this is gonna decide whether king billy's still in or is he out corrupt what did you think of the two arguments I mean, Iron Man is a Iron Man is a womanizer. There's, there's no, you know, that's that's pretty common to his first to his uh, character. Uh, King Billy did make does make a good point though, in that uh, Bruce Wayne does uh, is a playboy. Like that is his, even if it's fake, it is it is that persona's uh, trademark that it is uh, that he is a playboy. He is a womanizer. He's always out with like one or two like a different girl like every time you see him so i'm i mean and he's right that it, it doesn't have to be who he really is but i mean it is something he does so i'll give the point to billy uh, i think corrupt sigh and sounds at the beginning said it all <laughs> that this uh, after the last one where they're coming out swinging this one both came as another slap fest uh, okay uh, you know, this was a hard one to call. A real hard it, one. It, it was, but I actually, I, well, okay, I'm, I'm not judging. You guys do. Go. Uh, but with that said, I'm, I think I'm going to have to give this one to the king just barely for the same reason Krupp said. It was so close. I mean, this was a hard one. 
come all the way down to the uh, to the very last question. Now, this one's going to be an easy one. This is this is one that everybody has asked or or talked about in some way, shape, or form. So, I'm going to let this is an easy one. So, I'm expecting some great arguments from you. Uh, and and once again, it's open. First one to talk is the first one to speak. Can you tell me who is the best, Robin? Damian Wayne. Oh, Nick Grayson. All righty, King Billy, you spoke first, so you get to talk first. Whenever you begin talking, time is on the clock. Okay, so Damian Wayne is the best Robin to me because unlike other Robins, he is basically someone who is trained to be a killer, so he has to learn to be human again, whereas the other Robins are basically like they, they had bad history or they were orphans or whatever, and they didn't have that having to reclaim their humanity, whereas Damian, he has to become human, so it's almost like He's a human, but kind of like with Superman or whatever, you know, he has to learn to remain human. Time. He has to find his humanity. Dick Grayson, of course, being the original Robin, has the closest tie to Batman because before Dick Grayson, there was no Robin. Batman worked alone, as I'm sure most versions of Batman would tell you. It was the connection he felt to Bruce that eventually made Bruce... And time. Consider and create Robin. Okay, so Robin, like Dick Grayson's Robin is the original, but I just feel like a lot of people's love of him is mainly due to nostalgia because he is the first. And he has he has an interesting character, but Damien to me just it feels a little more complex morally, and as his hero's journey just seems more unique compared to the other Robins. Whereas Dick Grayson's the template, whereas Damien to me just feels like a different and kind of better character. Time. He's not better though because he was in a cult that's the only reason why he needs the whole rehabilitation thing and he's still an asshole he went from murderer to psychotic asshole that's not really a progression so much as it is i am now mildly less of an asshole than i was previously and time a lot of people as soon as the question was asked in the comments everybody was like Tim, 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 Tim. That would that would have been my choice, but I think you guys picked. No one likes. No one likes Tim. I like. I like Tim. But all righty, let's start. Let's start with Frugal this time. Frugal, what do you think about the arguments they gave? Well, it didn't surprise me that somebody would prefer Dick. Dalton did bring up a point. He was the OG. He was the original one that made Batman switch from being a loner to more of a family man. Really, to be honest with that, give him a lot of credit for that. Whereas. King came out with a lot of good reasonings for Damien, you know, of how he was a lot different than the other Robins. Where all the other Robins tend to be similar, he was sort of reverse. He had to, he came with a fighting attitude and had to learn to be human. So this one, wow, this this was a tough one for me. I'm gonna have to go with Dalton on this one. All right, uh, before you jump, chime in, corrupt everybody in the comment section, just in case there's a tie. Start voting now. Who you thought had the better argument? Both of them had. Both of them had good arguments, and both of them had. Dalton had a good point. Had some good points. However, King Billy really swung me with the fact that, with the fact that Damien has to learn to uh, to be le to to be human. And yes, and King is right. It is a progression. It may not be a massive progression, but it is a progression of his behavior uh, from being uh, just a merciless killer to being an asshole, but, you know, less than that. So I got to give it to Billy. That that swung me. The, the fact that he brought up the human point, that really did swing me. So I'm giving it to Billy. But to be fair, I mean, I'm serious. This was a really tight one. After the last one, you guys, this one, you really, you came out better and with a more yep. foundation for each one. It was, it was a tough choice. You, you guys are tied now in the comments, by the way. <laughs> this is a close yeah. one. Got yeah. You. So keep, keep voting who you thought made the best argument, kids, because they are tied. And right now you, you're tied as far as, uh, as far as uh, who made the best argument. So after a great and hard fought uh, argument there. That went long. Uh, and it did. It did. It went right down to the uh, wire. Final vote. Final decision. Dalton gets the point. Which means, Dalton, you are in the winner's circle there, my friend. You are among those who have won a comic book Thunderdome. So there you go, guys. Those are the arguments. That's the winner.
all four of the speed round questions were asked and answered. Who do you think won? Did we get it right? Did we get it wrong? What do you think should be another uh, comic book fight club question? And yes, that's what I'm changing the name to. Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to click like, share, subscribe, ring that notification bell if you haven't done it already. Cool things happen around these parts. And if you don't mind helping out the channel, go on over to Patreon or to Ko-Fi, drop a dollar in the till. Or you could even commission a video. Just pick out the topic subject and we'll get that out to you ASAP. Like, thank everybody who's already done that. And to everyone, all of the true believers. Thank you very, very much for watching.